idea of finishing this in this video so please watch and uh, let me know if there's uh, any advice you have thanks let's get started all right there's a time you have weathering master I'm gonna use the gun metal Showing up too well. Hmm. Come on, what the hell? Hmm. Okay, it's kind of showing up now, I guess. It's did before and after. Yeah, it's just a very subtle effect. Very subtle. Okay, then I'll have to do a clear coat, make sure it doesn't wear off. Hmm, that's pretty cool actually. I'm trying not to go overboard with all the various weathering, but some parts that I think are necessary. I'm using the Tamiya uh, Petaline Accent Color Black going around these uh, engine nacelles here. Let that fill in the let's make the in-between areas. That's just never going to look good, unfortunately. I had to putty that so many times because it kept breaking there. Oh well. Probably it's not going to be too noticeable unless I point it out to people, I guess. Alright. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go back to the Mr. Color 307. Because that's the under undercoat. I am just gonna touch up the canopy just slightly, just slightly. Okay, I should do it, I guess. There, just slightly. Time for a flat coat. This is uh, Mr. Color 182, flat clear.
Okay. Flat coat is in place. It's very, very flat. Let's peel this guy off here and uh, see what it looks like. Nice. This is about got some lint or something. <laughs> Don't know. Let me just peel this, uh, pull this crap off as much as I can. But should be good to go. All right. Let's pull this guy off here. There. There. Okay. I think I'm done. Now, if I go ahead and plug in the power source here, I have to solder this into place. Now, well, what I want to do next is uh, use some clear colored acrylics and color in those displays and such, bring a little bit more life to them. But that looks pretty great. Unfortunately, the things in the middle are a little bit dim. Oh well. These are pretty cool though. Pretty cool. Alright. side as well. Uh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Get going. There we go. Look at that. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit left to go. Almost done here. Hmm. Let's see how well these got lined up. I think they're okay. They look symmetrical, I suppose. They just kind of stick out, I guess, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay, 
let's see how the... Okay, so this plugs in here like so. There we go. There. Hmm. Cool. Uh, the ball joint's kind of loose. <laughs> Alright. Well, anyhow. Clear green. Tamiya X25. That's a little bit better. Okay. There we go. Gosh. Just uh, paint those along there, and uh, next, just get some uh, acrylic thinner here. Rinse off my brush. Okay. Yellow. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, those are nice and yellow now. Guess I can make these yellow. Done. And perhaps let me get add a little bit more color. Let's get some clear blue. Okay. Clear blue. Oh, uh, Chuck, I need a Stir this up a little bit. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. Let's make these blue. Okay, I finished off with uh, some red, clear red, on a few parts, and uh, the blue is looking kind of nice. This is, I think, all that's left to be put on. And then I'm done, except I do need to solder the wires. Right. Okay, come on. There we go. Yeah, I do need to uh, solder my connections, though, but I am done. All right, so um, 
one thing I can maybe impart onto people. I mean, there's more than one way to do this, I suppose. But, see, like this uh, ball joint here is a little bit floppy. A little floppy and loose. Let me turn this off. Let me unplug this guy here. Let's pop this out here. All right, so you got a problem with this ball joint, right? You can also, you know, it's for your action figures as well, too. And this is just some clear fingernail polish. And I'm just gonna apply this and let this dry. And it's gonna add some friction and uh, hold that in place. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, this stuff here needs to, I need to solder this, make these wires shorter. So, let me uh, just go ahead and talk about this model one last time. Okay, so yeah, I did the UV resin on the uh, the instrumentation panel, and I kind of learned from my mistakes. I will be more careful about that in the next time. Um, but uh, yeah, because a little bit of it kind of uh, leaked out a little bit, and it wasn't such a clear, uh, clean uh, adhesion. So maybe I should, if I'd use some sort of like tape or something rather to stick it on there to make sure it doesn't move around when the UV resin is being poured on. Anyhow, this is 48 scale as far as I know. So the model is not perfect obviously. It is an old MP, uh, MP3 and MPC kit. But, you know, it, it, it certainly does have its charm. Um, 48 scale, you can't beat that. That is really nice. Bandai never came out with a 48 scale. A wing, unfortunately, and uh, of course it does have raised panel lines, which is not good. But I guess I don't mind too much. You know, if if you have the ability to rectify that and knock yourself out. Me, on the other hand, I just don't want to hassle with that. I guess I don't mind it the way this is. I think I might just leave this. Is it gonna hold? Yeah, it kind of holds on there. Maybe I'll just leave this up. Now, the pilot figure is actually from the TIE Interceptor, not this kit. The pilot that this kit comes with is laughably, terribly stupid looking. Cannot recommend that whatsoever. Um, after painting up his, his uh, chest computer, doesn't look too bad, I suppose. Now. The underside, the problem with the underside, of course, is that you had to deal with these uh, big holes where the landing gears went, and then there's this thing, and I can't, I think I used some photo etch here or something, I can't remember, <laughs> I have to look at the first video or something, but uh, I had uh, uh, filled in that, that detail there, here's where those uh, landing landing gears went uh, doesn't look so bad they also had a problem with uh, filling in this uh, terrible seam line and the other bad problem is this part here right here it's not so bad but on here though it was just really blech so I had to fill that in with my own uh, plot plate and uh, fix that oh my gosh you're just Haunting me, aren't you? You're laughing at me, you stupid speck of lint. I hate you. There we go. Oh, your little friend wants to be removed too, huh? I hate you both. There we go. Alright, so surprisingly, these decals worked. I was just really, really surprised with that. Um, and yeah, the other decals here and here I just used from that uh, Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, these parts here are, are pretty fragile. These broke off too many times. That's not good. Oh well. But uh, lighting this up was pretty easy. Can't complain. 
just got a little uh, port here to stick that in there and just kind of use the stand that this model kit comes with so there's nothing else more I can talk about I suppose this, this is kind of cool I know like all the toys have ever done this I don't know if the actual model if, if the you know in Star Wars lore if these things are made to be uh, like for strafing and shooting up or whatever I don't know uh, you certainly don't see that in the movie. The movie just kind of... Return of the Jedi just throws a whole bunch of new ships at you all at once. And then doesn't really spend a whole lot of time on the means, right? So, anyhow, I'm rambling. Well, here comes a slideshow. So, as always, live long and prosper. May the Force be with you. And so long. Thanks for all the fish. Bye. Bye.